Hi, so I was asked to look at a coil winder. And a coil winder has certain characteristics that just caught my imagination and I thought were really interesting. Because what you want is something that will move backwards and forwards to a limit, while feeding wire, obviously, and something that will turn. And it was that backwards and forwards to a limit that really caught my imagination, because that kind of motion, obviously, is used a lot in robotics and a lot in machine control. And it was a question, really, of what was the basics of that. Now, it basically comes down to two circuits. It's a latching circuit and something called a hitch bridge. The latching circuit we've actually looked at before when we looked at the fish fryer, but we're going to look at it again here as part of this motion control. Now, that motion control is achieved by swapping the polarity of what's driving the motor. So if I take a DC motor and attach the red to the positive and the black to the negative, the motor will turn in one direction. If I swap those over and attach the black to the positive and the red to the negative, the motor will rotate in the opposite direction. And so we can get a change in motion if we can swap the polarity of those wires. Now that polarity swapping actually is done with a circuit called a H-bridge, which is basically four switches. But we're going to deal with each one separately. Now, a latching circuit is where we press a button so that the thing comes on and stays on until we press another button when the thing goes off and stays off. Now, that's obviously important because as something is moving, if it hits the limit of where we want it to go to, when we make that hit a switch, that switch will turn it off and so prevent it going any further. We, of course, want to switch the other switch on so that it goes back until it hits that limit. And those two limit switches are what the latching circuit does. Now, a latching circuit using a relay looks like this. And this is an implementation of it. I'll give you a close-up in a minute when we look at both of the circuits. But on this, I have two switches. If I press this switch, that relay operates... And even though I don't press a switch anymore, it stays on. That is latched now and latched in the on position and is switching this relay on. Until I press my off switch, when it goes off, that relay switches off and it stays off. So these two switches operate this in a latching mode. So it will latch on and it will latch off. So clearly if I have a motor moving an arm and I make that motor hit this or uh, that arm, sorry, hit this or this, I can operate the latch. Now the latch is important because it can drive another thing. And what we're using that to drive is the hitch bridge. Now a hitch bridge isn't much more than four switches. And the basic hitch bridge looks like this. Now, H-bridge switching circuits are used a lot to change the polarity across a load, and you can, of course, use them in motors and motor control and robotics. But that's not the only place they're used. Actually, they have a quite a wide application. You find them in audio, you find them in LED. They're used in uh, DC to DC power converters if we switch across a transformer and then rectify that transformer output. So they have a whole huge range of uses. Now, to translate a H-bridge into a relay, it looks like this. And what we've done here with our two relays is put those two circuits together. Now, I've isolated the power so that it won't apply power to the motor, which is right here, until I press the motor switch. So let me give you a close-up view of those circuits operating. So this is the latching relay. And it is wired exactly like that wiring diagram we showed you. It's just wired into the foot here, and then you push the relay in. And the relays always come in little diagrams showing you what the relay layout is. So the coil activation coil is here, and then the two relays are here and here. So it's really easy to wire up. All I have to do is press that switch, and there we go. The relay comes on, activating that relay, and then I press the latch off switch, and they turn off. Now, there's no power to this at the moment because it's right there, it's just the power button. But if I press the power on, so if I latch it on and press the power on, the motor will move in one direction. I latch it, it'll move in the other direction because the latching switch is operating this as a H-bridge so that we can reverse the action of that motor.
<laughs> it's quite fascinating. Obviously, if I put these two latching switches, if I put those two latching switches at the limit of that arm motion, then those switches become sensors. So it can sense the position of the arm and operate it in reverse using the H-bridge. So clearly two extremely useful circuits. Now we can implement this using solid state electronics where we use transistors just as switches. But I think that um, very often using solid state kind of confuses the issue and, and you lose track of what it is you're actually looking at because all of this is implemented in nothing more than switches. And when we use transistors as switches, we can do exactly the same thing. But I think doing it in a mechanical way like this makes it obvious that all we're really doing is operating switches. Now, we're operating those switches using sensors. Our sensors are our limit switches, but we could, of course, use an Arduino and use a timing signal to do exactly the same thing. The basics of the circuits remain the same. They are just switches switched on and switched off. The control of that can be as simple as a couple of limit switch sensors or more complicated like an Arduino or we can implement it in solid state. But the idea, I think, is better explained just demonstrating it as switches through relays. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you find the circuits useful and thank you very much for watching.